what is one of the most crucial factors in determining whether your child completes a task, whether it be for school or, or anything, or even for yourself? The level of concentration. The amount of effort you put into concentrating on what's being asked determines the quality of the output, right? So what does concentration even mean? In this video, we're going to look at what concentration is and then look at ways in which we can nurture that and develop it so that we can concentrate better for our children's sake and for our own. So what is concentration? Well, actually, concentration, the word itself, comes from Latin com, meaning together or with, and centrum, meaning center. And that makes sense because when we concentrate, we focus all of our energy onto one task, onto one goal. So what does that mean in terms of the brain? Well, neuroscientists have mapped, uh, using brain imagery, what our brain does when we concentrate and focus on a task. And what happens is the neuron transmitters light up, particularly those relating to serotonin and oxytocin. And these two neurotransmitters also act as a hormone and are strongly linked to our emotions and feeling good. So what does that mean? It means if we want to concentrate on a task, we actually have to be emotionally engaged. If we can emotionally be attached to something, then we are more inclined to concentrate. Which means that if we want our children to concentrate more, then we need to engage them emotionally in a task. For example, perhaps you do not like your tax return, you hate numbers. But you need a high level of concentration to make sure that mistakes are minimised and to get the task done. Perhaps equally your child hates maths. It's quite abstract. They find it quite dull. Well, with that emotional engagement, then both you and your child are not going to want to do it. So then what can you do? Well, you can think about the emotions that you're going to feel and experience once that task is done, how elated and ecstatic you will feel once you know that your tax return is done, it's completed with no mistakes. With your child then, what can you do to instill in them how they might feel if they complete their maths? Well, how will you feel once you know that all your work is completed and you can present it to your, you know, your parents or to your teacher? How will you feel when you've mastered that skill and you can demonstrate that to your classmates? Or for example, if they particularly like cars, then you might want to implement that in their multiplication, for example. So you might say two cars times two cars equals, because they already have that passion for cars, then they're more inclined to focus their attention on it because you've whet their appetite. Now, how can we then stretch and nurture our concentration? Our brain is, you know, like elastic. We can stretch it and, and develop it. So how can we develop these neurotransmitters that are related to concentration. Well, games, game playing is really a great tool to nurture and develop this. In particular, something called the Stroops test. And in the Stroops test, what it has is words such as red, written in a different font such as green. And you have to say either the word or the color, depending on the task. And what that does is it helps to gauge the brain into that task. And because it's quite fun, the reward is, well, doing something quite challenging. Indulging in puzzles is another great way in which you can develop and nurture concentration. And actually, at the bottom of this video is a resource sheet of all the different tests and games that you can play yourself and your child can play and you can play with your child to help to develop their concentration. Now, since we know that concentration means focusing in on one task, on one goal, it means that we perhaps need to limit the amount of distractions. Now, in today's modern world, it's so easy to be distracted. We can multitask, especially if we have multiple screens, right? We can have the laptop, the mobile phone. Children can have the laptop, the TV on, the iPad, the phone. So many things going on. And we think that we are multitasking. And perhaps we are. But actually, we're not giving our full attention, our full concentration on one thing. So how can we nurture that? Well, we can actually shut down and remove some of the other distractions. 
if you have a habit of checking your emails constantly, especially since they ping up, maybe set some time when you're going to look at them so you don't get distracted by that. For your child, if they have social media on their phone, perhaps you can close it down and say, no, for this length of time, you're going to concentrate on this task. Afterwards, you can then go back to that. You could also help to develop concentration by actually creating some background noise. So you could have some music being played in the background. Now, music that's really useful in helping to harness concentration is music that's quite rhythmic and repetitive, ideally with no lyrics. And what that creates is a background noise so you don't get distracted from anything else, from the phone ringing, from a knock on the door, from neighbours, from you know, traffic. So creating a background noise for your child whilst they're studying in particular is a great way to help them to focus in on what they're doing. So to summarise then, concentration means com and centrum, together, centre, so focusing in on one task. We can stretch and nurture our concentration through games, through the Stroops test. And if we thirdly, emotionally engage ourselves in what we're doing by thinking about or considering and imagining what it's going to feel like once we've completed a task. And actually, as well with our children, we can prime them for activities and making sure that they give their full attention to it by letting them know in advance. So, for example, if they're skipping or playing outside and then you want them to come inside and do some math, you can tell them in 15 minutes you have to come inside for maths. In 10 minutes, you have to come inside for math. In five minutes, you have to come inside for maths. Now you have to come inside for maths. Actually, that helps them to transition and to then focus their attention onto something else. They are emotionally prepared for it because you have given them those cues. And then finally, in terms of concentration, creating an environment in which we can focus in on one task by limiting our distractions, by shutting down other technologies in the room, by allocating ourselves time to do things that we want, like check our emails or to go on social media, and by creating background noise through repetitive music so that we can then focus solely on one task.